All right, let's look at um, how matter is organized. And again, this, this might appear um, a little overwhelming because this is our first lecture and there's a lot of information here, but this is a theme of our course and we will over and over and over again identify when we're talking about processes, when we're talking about critters, when we're talking about critters in groups, we will identify where we are on this hierarchical scale of organization of matter. I'm going to attempt to put them all in a row. We may, it may get a little messy here, but I'm gonna try to put it all on one piece of paper. And then in the next three lectures, we'll talk really specifically and we'll look at some pictures of um, all the levels of organization that are actually pre-life, non-living. And then when we get into um, living systems and then when we get into populations of living systems, like whole organisms that are living together. Okay, so we'll have, we're gonna spend a lot of time on this part and it's worth it. So let's start with the smallest level of organization, the smallest and least complex level of organization that we will deal with in this class. It does not mean that this is the smallest level of organization out there. There are smaller levels of organization, but we just are like, dude, this is good enough for us. The first level of organization that we're going to deal with is subatomic particles. So let's take, let's put that down here. So this is first subatomic particles. How's that look? Hmm. I kind of, that's, it's looking a little small, but I can't see what you see. So if anybody looks at this, give me feedback early because I can change it moving forward if this is too small. Subatomic particles are things like electrons. They're things that make up the atoms. So the next level of organization is an atom. And this is where I'm talking about like, um, complexity. The subatomic particles are used to build atoms. Atoms are used to build molecules. So a molecule is several atoms stuck together and connected by an, a bond. Molecules, small molecules, are used to build bigger molecules, or I refer to them as biomolecules but they're a bigger type of molecule. Some people call them macromolecules. And we're gonna have whole lectures on chemistry. In fact, I think we have two lectures on chemistry in this course. And so we'll talk about atoms and molecules and subatomic particles and why they're relevant to living systems. Biomolecules are where we start getting like, oh, this is really cool. We're building stuff that we're familiar with. Carbohydrates are biomolecules, and those are tasty things, aren't they? Biomolecules are used to build carbohydrates. Proteins are used to build the machines of the cell, and the machines of the cell are called organelles. There are several organ-ish words in our list. Um, and so you're gonna wanna spend some time thinking about this. Organelles are not yet alive and they are found inside a cell, but they're made of biomolecules. So do you see how we're actually getting more complex? The organelles are used and build cells. This is the point where we now have life. So from this point on, before this, we'll have all sorts of characteristics, but we don't have all the characteristics of life. But once we reach the level of the cell, we are now in um, a living thing, even if it's just one little cell. Cells, when they um, combine together to, um, and they work together, like many, 
we have many kinds of cells. And when many different kinds of cells work together for a common purpose, we get a tissue. And tissues, the study of tissues, this is histology. We'll, we'll look at these all in a little bit more detail coming up. But tissues are used to build bodies. And we have um, many tissues in us. Tissues build bodies, but before they build bodies, they build organs. And organs combine together to make organ systems. Organ systems work together to make an organism. I think something that is significant is that this, like all of these that I put in green, these are qualities that are um, only present, well, the cell is present in a single-celled critter, but all the other ones are only found in multicellular critters, and not all living things have more than one cell. The cell is key, and we're going to spend lots of time talking about that guy. I'm going to go ahead and change our color again because we're going to look at um, once we get to the organism level, after that, we're talking about organisms together, like a bunch of organisms. When you have a bunch of organisms, population, a bunch of organisms of the same type living together in a group, that's a population. A common way of thinking about this might be a species. Um, although you can have different populations of critters living in different places that are the same species. Um, but usually a population is the same kinds of critters living together. But we also can have a community. I wonder if I'm gonna be able to fit all this on here, almost. A community is multiple different kinds of critters living together in an area and an ecosystem. Okay, we're going this direction, folks. An ecosystem is all those critters, all those communities, and the environment, the non-living environment that all of them are part of. And then our last thing is the biosphere. And I just include that because we don't really talk about the biosphere, but all of this is taking place in the biosphere, which is the planet Earth. Okay, there's your big view of the organization of living systems. And now I'm gonna go in and look at each one of those things in more detail. So keep these notes up, like keep your list up. And now I'm going to show you pictures and talk about each one of those um, things. And go ahead and look at this um, list, the non-living, the cell, and the multicellular organisms, and see if you can figure out or predict what we're going to talk about um, in each one of the next video sections.